you can't get the images out of your head and it's driving you crazy. You know what I'm talking about. I hear this not only from my clients, but from many of the men who come to me for support and consultations. Usually they say it very sheepishly. It's something they admit and they pretty it up with nice language by saying, you know, I, I just find that I can't stop thinking about her being intimate with this new guy. But come on, let's be real here. The problem is that you cannot get the image of your ex-wife fucking somebody else out of your head and it's driving you nuts. In this video, we are going to have a very frank and honest discussion about this phenomena. I'm gonna help you understand where it comes from, why it is so powerful and why it's so hard to get those images out of your head. And then I'm going to give you some practical strategies to help you do just that so that you can finally sleep at night. As we get started here, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe if you haven't already, if you're enjoying these videos and don't forget to click the little bell, turn on notifications, that way you'll get notified every time I put out new content, which is happening every week. So these mental images of your wife with somebody else and the jealousy that goes along with them, they can happen to anybody. It really doesn't matter if you thought you were totally fine after the divorce or if you were still reeling from it. It hits everybody strongly. I hear things from guys that are like, you know, I'm really not a jealous guy at all. But when it comes to my wife, I have to be like, wait a minute, your ex-wife remember your ex-wife but you don't remember because in that moment the jealousy is overwhelming that imagery is there and it's that's my wife so what's really going on here usually what happens is you actually do have a mental image in your mind of her having sex with somebody else and maybe it's just one mental image but more likely it's like a whole stream of them that you have image after image after image of them having nice making love kind of sex right up into more hardcore stuff why are you seeing images? Why do you literally have an image that you're looking at in your mind? All thoughts have a visual component. In fact, all thoughts also have an auditory and a kinesthetic or a feeling component. But most humans have a preferred modality, a preferred way of processing information. And for a lot of men, it's visual. Certainly not for everybody, but it's very common. And that can be great, you know, for things like planning a road trip or analyzing a ball game. But when it comes to jealousy, it feels like a curse. It feels like there's somebody like holding your eyelids open and making you watch your ex have sex with somebody else. And you're being tortured that way. But you're the one doing the torturing and you can't seem to make yourself stop. It's important to understand the reason why this is such a powerful and overwhelming feeling. Most men feel it and they start to wonder what it means and they think, God, am I still in love with her? Am I meant to be with her or something? Why is this coming up so strongly, especially if you thought you were over the divorce? Part of the reason that this jealousy and that these images evoke such a powerful response in you is because they're coming from a very primal part of your brain. This kind of jealousy, not wanting your ex to be with somebody else intimately, that's coming from a survival part of your brain. So let's take a zoom back in time and really look at our ancestors and a little bit of evolutionary biology to make sense of why these emotions are so powerful. From a genetic standpoint, it's in a man's best interest to a, have sex with as many women as possible, to spread his seed as widely, to reproduce his offspring, his genetic material as much as possible. But it's also important for that man that those women don't have sex with a lot of other people because that now really limits the likelihood of their sperm, of their genetic material being the winner in that race and actually fertilizing the egg. I know this may sound kind of old fashioned, but from a genetic standpoint, it is in a man's best interest to have sex with lots of women and have those women not have sex with anybody else. As a side note, at the same time, women's genetic proclivities push them in a different direction. It's in a woman's best interest to have a relationship with a man who will support her and take care of her during that vulnerable period of time where she's pregnant and those vulnerable years when her child is very young. In fact, it's in a woman's best interest to have good relationships with multiple men. That's her best chance for her own survival and the survival of her children. It's just another place where you can see how men and women on a biological level are often set up to be at odds with each other. It's one of the reasons that relationships can be so difficult. I am dramatically oversimplifying evolutionary biology and its effects on jealousy right now. But I think that this overly simplified view is going to be really helpful for you to make sense of this jealousy. The reason that it is so powerful is because it is innately linked 
to your ability to pass on your genes. So that is a survival level, a reproduction level need that's coming from a very primal part of the brain. And those urges and those responses and those emotions can be incredibly powerful. That does not mean you cannot overcome this kind of jealousy or change it. In fact, knowing this might actually make it a lot easier for you to start to overcome this jealousy. Every time you feel that jealousy come up, you start seeing those images in your mind and you have that powerful response. Every time you notice that and you say, oh, yep, there's that survival brain again, all worried about how I'm going to pass on my genes. But you can laugh a little bit at that, but it takes the edge off. It takes the edge off of that emotion because now you don't have to make it mean anything else. You don't have to make it mean that maybe you're still in love with her. You don't have to make it mean that the two of you are meant to be together, but you can just be like, oh yeah, Yep, there's that primal brain going on about reproduction again. I know what this is. That doesn't make the feeling go away, but it gives you some distance from it. And it allows you to make choices from your rational brain instead of from that really primal survival brain. All of that brings us back to how you actually work through jealousy. And the way you work through jealousy is a combination of awareness and intention. The awareness we already talked about, it's noticing when that feeling comes up and reminding yourself of what it really is. Not putting so much meaning on it or letting it dictate all of your decisions. That's the awareness piece. The intention is deciding intentionally how you want to think about these things going forward. Something that can be really useful as you do this work is to take a really close look at what those mental images actually look like in your brain. For instance, pull up that image right now and look at your wife. What does she look like? Does she look like she actually looks in your day-to-day life right now? Or does she look like she did like 20 years ago when you first got married? Or does she maybe just look way hotter than she ever did the whole time you've known her? You're looking for ways that your brain's story, your brain's imagined event differs from reality. I also want you to take a look at the guy. This part's going to be uncomfortable and it's really going to trigger that primal survival brain. But look at him. What does he look like? Odds are that he's got all the qualities that you wish you had. He's probably taller than you, stronger than you, more muscular. Maybe he's blonde haired and blue eyed, or maybe he's tall and dark and handsome. Look at what your brain is creating. Who is this guy? And what are you imagining? If you're willing to look closely enough, you'll probably also notice things like your ex-wife doing things with this new partner that either she never did with you or things that you thought she would only ever do with you. What you're doing here is you're bringing conscious awareness to your subconscious images because your brain is just coming up with these things and it's throwing them at you and it's torturing you and it's being like this is happening right now she's with this guy and she's doing all of this and he's so amazing and she's so gorgeous and it's tormenting you with these images so take a look take some of that power away by looking at those images and noticing how unrealistic and unlikely a lot of it is The reality is that you don't know anything about her relationship with this new guy, but you do know one thing. You know this woman, you were married to her. And yeah, maybe she doesn't seem like the same person she was when you were married. I get that. A lot of times men come to me and they're like, you know, she's like a totally different person. And that's honestly the hardest part. But some of that is also coming from your brain's own protective and coping mechanisms. You know some things about this woman. And guess what? If the sex wasn't amazing between the two of you, It's probably not amazing between her and this new guy. And even if the sex was amazing between the two of you, it doesn't really say anything about what's happening with this fellow. We can't predict it. You cannot know. The only people who actually know the reality of what's happening in a relationship are the two people that are in it. What it looks like on Facebook, what your cousin told you about seeing them together, none of that tells us what's actually happening between them in the bedroom or otherwise. And frankly, you don't actually have to care. I know it feels like you have no choice because your brain is tormenting you with these images, but now you know what they are. They're just coming from this primal part of your brain that's like, that's my woman. She can't be with anybody else. I had sex with her. No one else can have sex with her. This is a primal, emotional, charged state, and it can feel really overwhelming. But the more that you can bring your conscious awareness to it and recognize what it is, that it really is just that lizard brain taking over and wanting to be like, me, Tarzan, you, Jane, right? Like you don't have to listen to it. It's powerful. It's there. It's going to come up. There's not a lot you can do to delete it quickly. Over time, we absolutely can change those images. 
But the most important thing you can do is take the power out of them by realizing that this doesn't mean anything for you. It doesn't mean that you're lesser than this guy, that he's better than you. It doesn't mean you want your ex-wife back. It doesn't mean that you guys should be together, that you're still in love with her, that you're never going to get over her. It just means that your internal lizard brain is having a really hard time dealing with the idea of her having sex with somebody else. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong. Nothing has gone wrong when you feel that jealousy. And I think that's where a lot of guys get really upset about it is it feels like maybe something has gone wrong. Nothing's gone wrong. This is just it's part of your biology. It's something that happens and you don't have to let it dictate the choices that you make in your life. If all of that sounds good, but you're not sure how to actually do it in your day-to-day -day life, reach out, book a free consultation with me, and I can help you create a roadmap forward based on your unique situation that will help you move on from your divorce and really lay this jealousy to rest once and for all.